Paulie said, you know, I'll get a hold of John Hine because he has rules about the spoiler alert. We bring in John, who joins us now. John, good to have you on. Um, did I break a rule by mentioning what happened at the end of Breaking Bad? Thanks for having me, Dan. And you did and you didn't. Ooh. And I'll explain what I mean. Damn. I have no issue with you saying what happened at the end of Breaking Bad. The series is over. People have had plenty of time to watch it. No problem there. However, saying spoiler alert after you spoiled the series <laughs> is definitely an issue. You can't do that. That's a big no-no. Spoiler alert must come before the spoiler, not after you've already said it. <laughs> Let's go through the rules here. The rules are simple. Okay. If a series has been completed and a good month has passed, then everything is fair game. If Look, with the way spoilers, they're all over the Internet now. The New York Post, the day after you know someone got killed off on The Good Wife, had it running the next day. you got to be – you got to understand that if you miss it, you miss it. If a series is completed, if it's a series finale, though, then I think you've got 24 hours, really, to keep your mouth shut. And then it's okay to talk about it. A season finale, 48 hours, two days. Give people a little more time to watch the season finale. And then a regular episode, I think you should wait five days before spoiling anything. If everyone adhered to these simple rules, I think we'd all be happier as a television viewing public. And there's also two different types of spoilers. They're spoiling when you're excited, and they're spoiling with intent. And my question to you, Dan, would be, did you spoil because you were excited about the series, talking about it, and just you know making some good conversation? Because some people do spoil with intent to ruin someone's livelihood, and that's a big no-no. Uh, I was an accidental spoiler, John. Then I think we can forgive it. Okay, because I was excited about it. I think it's one of the greatest TV shows of all time. What, Seton? My problem with oh. these guidelines is that with modern technology, most people are either getting stuff on DVR or Netflix or, you know— all kinds of different avenues, not just, well, it's on Tuesdays. I better get this in the next seven days. Seton, you've had your chance, okay? You can watch it live. Mm. That modern technology is available very, very quickly. You can watch any episode within the week. We're giving you plenty of time to watch the app before it gets spoiled. Now, the other thing people complain about is Twitter. Everybody, you know, is spoiling things on Twitter. As much as it kills me when I'm watching a show like Game of Thrones, for example, I don't go on Twitter. I don't want to see – if I'm, like, running behind and catching up, I don't want to see when anybody has to tweet. Afterwards, I'll go on, and I have no problem tweeting about it and answering questions. But as you're watching or if you are a couple days behind, you got to know. I mean, maybe you got to mute a couple people with that new function that they have so they don't spoil your favorite television show. But, but, John, what about movies? Movies are tough because if – the best example I could think of is The Sixth Sense, right? It was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. No one told you the twist of that film months, even years later. You had to go see it because they did such a good job with it. You know, a buddy of mine one time walked into, uh, was walking out of a movie theater, and The Jagged Edge was playing. And walking away, he screams, and spoiler alert for those of you who haven't seen the movie The Jagged Edge, he was walking away and he screams out, Jeff Bridges did it! And all the people online had no idea what he was oh, saying. You know? no. And then an hour and a half later, <laughs> sure enough, they wanted to track him down because he ruined the whole movie. So you need to be with, – with movies, you need to be careful. But I think the movies sort of self-police themselves. And if a twist is really, really crazy and people respect it, they'll keep it quiet. He's John Hine from The Howard Stern Show and uh, the book and the website Jump the Shark, jumptheshark.com. Best TV – okay, where would you put Breaking Bad – and The Wire among best shows of all time? Definitely top five. For me, The Wire is number one. I love The Wire. I think it's the best television drama ever created. Breaking Bad is right there. Uh, the Sopranos is right there. Currently, I think Mad Men could contend for being in that top five, but we're talking straight dramas there. But Breaking Bad, oh, the best part about Breaking Bad, Dan, was they knew they were ending things, they knew everyone was watching and looking for any little detail to kind of figure out what was going on. And each episode got better as it got to that climax. Yeah. And that's rare. Even the great Seinfeld, for example, that finale, nobody really loved. And even if you thought it was good, you weren't like, wow, what a great way for those guys to go out. They did a better job with that on Curb Your Enthusiasm a few years later. 
But with Breaking Bad, the expectations were set so high, and Vince Gilligan, they just nailed it. And Cranston, oh, my God, I can't think of a better television performance than what he did as Walter White. Do you I heard agree? that uh, Matthew Broderick was up for that job before Brian Cranston. Did you hear that? I did, and it would have been, suffice to say, a completely different program because – the man is Walter White, and it's it's a good thing in a sense that you'll always associate him with that. I know he's doing LBJ on Broadway now, and he's incredible in that as well. But and he was coming off of Malcolm in the Middle, yes. so no one really <laughs> knew that this guy can end up being one of the I mean Heisenberg, one of the greatest characters of all television time. What about sitcom top five? Sitcoms, I put Seinfeld there, definitely top five. I was a big uh, Honeymooners guy. I like Cheers a lot. Um, in terms of the current sitcoms, I think Modern Family is good, but not great, not in the upper echelon. Um, other than that, oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back to drama for a second. I forgot the Twilight Zone. I love the Twilight Zone. That's mm -hmm. top five for me as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think with sitcoms, uh, MASH is in there probably. And, and um, I, All in the Family, I, I still look at All in the Family. I'd like to see a remake of All in the Family, and maybe HBO would do it, but you get this curmudgeon like Archie Bunker, one of the greatest characters of all, all time. But I don't even know if we could do it because it was so race-sensitive, and it was back in the 70s. I wonder if we can do it now, as strange as that may sound. I don't know if we've evolved where we could do All in the Family. I don't think you can. I certainly not on network television anymore. You watch some of those old All in the Family episodes, and you know Archie Bunker is just spewing off tons of racism. And I think people, unfortunately, some don't see the humor in it and just see you know the one dimension of what he has to say. The closest thing to a show like that right now, I think, is Louie. I think uh, Louis C.K. does yeah. an amazing job on that show, where it's not just a comedy; it's uh, it's a very poignant show, and they, you know, they'll cross lines to make very, very strong points in social satire. I don't think All in the Family could survive in this day, but I love that show. I love the Jeffersons as well. That whole CBS lineup back then was must see TV. Uh, if you had, if you spoiled something before uh, Howard Stern saw it. How, how would Howard react to that if you ruined, you know, some of those silly shows that he watches? I don't think I'd have a job anymore, Dan. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. I'm very, very careful with that. We talk, you know, before every show in the morning, every Howard Stern show, and I know if he's seen Game of Thrones or if he's seen, you know, some of the shows that we both watch. He also watches The Bachelor. I don't watch any of the reality stuff. That's just not for me. But even if I see a spoil, I am not going anywhere near it. There Has he no yelled way. at you? He hasn't yelled at me for that um, because I've been smart enough not to do that. I get they, – he's very, very good to me in that way. But I also don't do a lot of the stuff that some of the other guys here do and make the mistakes to be yelled at. So I'm pretty careful there. More – you know, the thing he gets on me the most for is uh, my weight and me not really taking care of myself. And he's fascinated by the amount of television that I watch. And poor Gary, pop up. Bowie, he seems to get the brunt of everything there. Gary's got the toughest skin of any person I have ever met. He has been berated by Howard for 30 years. And unfortunately for Gary, he's got, you know, the love tape. He had the pitch recently, which became this <laughs> international phenomenon, which I know you talked about, oh, Dan. Oh, God. It was, I, I felt terrible for Gary when he went to the mound at the Mets game. I, I just I looked at the body language, and I thought, how could this go wrong? It, it went Left of it went wrong of wrong. I mean, it was just I. It went worse than it could possibly go. You know when it just gets. I mean, Rick Ankill, I think, is the best. You know when it just gets yes. in your head yeah. and, and you can't <laughs> throw. That's what happened with Gary. He he was worried about that months before it even started. He went to a sports psychologist. He's constantly thinking about it. And you know, it's like when you're on the foul line and you want to sink the winning free throw. If you think about what you're doing, you're not going to hit the rim. And Gary didn't hit the plate. He oh hit the umpire God. instead. What if Gary and Howard fought? That would be a good one. I think that Howard's got the size advantage, of course. He's got the reach. Gary, I think, may be a little bit stronger. And I think when the real anger came out between <laughs> the two of them, I think Gary may be able to take Howard down. But it would be a close. It might be a decision. It might go all 15. John, good to uh, have you on uh, Keep, uh, keep up the great work on the wrap-up show. 
Thanks, Dan. Pleasure talking to you and the Dan Ad. All right, that's uh, John Hine. Uh, Twitter handle is uh, at John, J-O-N, Hine, H-E-I-N. Good to have him on. And 